What is up you guys, it's AD, and today I wanted to bring you a quick video on how to prepare for Child in the upcoming banner. He's the new Hydro 5 star, he's looking pretty dope, he's kind of like a Shiro Emiya from the Fate series type character, and I kind of want to just go over his Ascension materials, what kind of teams he could probably fit onto, and some gear choices that you might be thinking of. So let's just dive right into it. As always guys, if you find the information to be useful in this video, please like, comment, and subscribe. It helps me out a lot and I like making Genshin content, so it lets me know uh, that you like it too. Uh, so for Child's Ascension materials, you are going to want to start stocking up on a bunch of star conches. These can mostly be found on the beaches in Li Wei, or Li Yu, whatever you want to call it. Um, that's 99% of the time that's where they are. As always, go and check out that Genshin uh, resources map to just be able to go and make a nice farming route and find uh, that resource. He's going to need that whenever you need to ascend him. As far as the other resources he's going to need, it's looking like, based off of the beta tests, again, all this can change, he's going to need uh, Sergeant's insignias, very similar to the likes of Deluc, and he's also going to need uh, Teachings of Freedom, also similar to, I believe Venti runs this. Uh, so you're gonna wanna stock up on these materials as well. Uh, also, he, I mean, this is kind of obvious, but in terms of other Ascension materials and talent materials, he's gonna need the Hydro stuff from Oceanid and the, uh, the Lazarite fragments just in order to uh, boost his uh, character up. Obviously, he is also a bow user, so you're going to want to go and try and find some good bows for him to use. I'll go into that in a little bit. But as far as these other materials, Lieutenant's new Insignia, Sergeant's Insignia, you know that. And spam some Teaching of Freedoms while you can. It looks like the next time is going to be Sunday or Monday. Monday is obviously the best time to go and look for those. But if you're pulling for child... That's definitely what you want to look for. As far as Sergeant's Insignias, I'm sure everybody knows at this point, but just to help you out a bit, if you want to look for a specific thing, you can go and uh, search in your bosses and you can see, oh, these Fatui Skirmishers, um, they always drop these materials. You just click navigate, it will point them out on your map and you can do that probably like eight times before you run out. Do those every day, they reset every day and you should be set when Child comes out. Obviously, as well, you're going to need a boatload of Mora and a boatload of Adventure um, XP boosts. So you're going to want to either stockpile your Mora or stockpile um, your Adventure, um, your Hero's Wits and, and things of that nature, those booklets, because in order to get him up to level 80 or 90 or wherever you're at, it, that's probably the biggest hurdle for a lot of people to jump through is is farming these. So you're gonna to wanna to spend a lot of your time farming these as well. So that kind of covers it as far as the actual materials for Ascension and everything else are concerned. Okay, so for team compositions, obviously I don't have Child yet because he hasn't been released as of the creation of this video. So in his place, I have put Razor. So whenever you see Razor, just imagine Child is there instead. Uh, for the first team composition, we have Child as the main DPS. We have Jinkui as the secondary Hydro character, who's kind of like an elemental energy battery for him. We have Fischl to proc Superconduct, and we have Venti as our Animo support because Venti is amazing. Now, if you see a five star that you don't have or something, I'm going to give you options to swap out, but I'm just letting you kind of know like some kind of optimal team compositions, right? So um, in general, the Hydro uh, Elemental Resonance isn't really that useful. Increase the incoming healing by 30%, but uh, because we have a secondary hydro when he goes and he applies hydro elemental effects uh he's going to provide extra energy orbs to child and that's kind of what we're looking for child is a uh, seemingly low cooldown but large energy usage um, main dps he attacks very quickly and so for that reason you want to have people that can apply status effects to targets at a rapid pace so that he can constantly proc elemental reactions off of them with thus the official. Now, as far as Jing Kui is concerned, um, he's going to, again, apply a bunch of hydro damage, but 
you can go and swap him out and still use some of his effects on child when you switch to child. Some of you might have pulled a couple of Jing Kui uh, duplicates from his banner. I'm not going to go into constellations. I'm going to assume that nobody has any, but if you happen to pull like a couple uh, from the most recent banner, um, this will this will reduce hydro resistance by enemies that are hit by Jinkui's abilities, which means that that's going to increase child's damage onto targets as well. He can also act as a pseudo healer because of his talents. Where is it? Right here. So when a range sword is shattered, it increases current character's max HP. So if you are in need of a healer, you're making like an abyss composition, Jinkui is, uh, is a decent support to have. Fischl, obviously, everybody knows we're getting a free Fischl, so if you don't have her, you should be able to get her for free in 1.1 with the new event that's coming out, but the reason why Fischl is nice is because, again, proc superconduct in a very fast way, child attacks quickly, so you want to have characters like a Fischl that can pop a lot of elemental effects very quick with Oz. Venti is there because he is an elemental energy battery and he can pull everybody in. Everybody knows Venti is amazing, but if you don't have him, Sucrose or somebody else like a healer or a Barbara would be just fine. Um, I'm just putting him there because I think that for an optimal team composition, he would be really nice. Whoops, accidentally exited out. Sorry about that. Um, sorry, I'm trying to go quickly because I could go on about this for a while. Uh, this second team composition is using child to proc uh, cryo effects. Cryo is a very, very useful skill to have in terms of uh, freezing enemies, especially in Spiral Abyss or any other outdoor content, really, because it prevents damage being done to you. So you don't necessarily have to have Kiki. Diona, which is another four-star character that will be coming to the game either with Child's Banner or the next banner, is a four-star Frost Archer who looks like she can apply a fair amount of Frozen status effects as well. Everybody has Kea, so I put him in there. Um, but if you could have two Cryo, that would be really useful as well because Cryo increased crit rate against enemies that are frozen or affected by Cryo by 15%. That's very solid when you consider the fact that, hey, if I can go and consistently proc cryo on something and child is going to constantly be applying a lot of aoe hydro damage you're going to be freezing a lot of enemies which means that crit rate is going to climb and it's he's also going to be very safe because of it so again if you don't have kiki you can use any other frozen person maybe a chong yun if you feel like it um, but this is another team composition just depending on what you guys really have it would be it you know it's kind of cool get it uh, skip this one this is probably what I'm going to be trying to run. I think it's probably the highest damage potential um, for a child team composition. And why? Well, the hardest hitting elemental reaction that you can possibly have, there's two in the game, right? There's Melt and there's Vaporize. Uh, both of them do two times damage depending on which element you're using to proc them. So Melt is when Pyro attacks a uh, Cryo, it does two times damage. The reverse only does 1.5. Vaporize, when you hit fire with water, it does two times damage. The reverse is only 1.5. So for the first time in this game, Mona is fantastic, but she's 100% burst oriented, right? Child is a consistently high damage hydro character, and he's going to be applying hydro effects constantly, right? So we can take advantage of Zhang Ling, who is kind of like a pyro official, so to speak. She can apply pyro effects very very quickly with guoba and with her uh pyro ultimate i don't know why i'm blanking on the name um but she can apply them very quickly what does this mean this means that child can constantly output two times damage guys double damage at all times plus with the elemental residence from your fire from double fire you're going to be having increased uh attack by 25 percent, which is very very useful it's one of the best elemental resonances so zhang ling Pretty much everybody has her at this point. So if you manage to pull Ra uh, not Razor, if you manage to pull Child, you're potentially looking at a constantly two times damage Child. It would be really, really nice to have. Venti, I've just tossed on Venti, but you could use a Sucrose, you could use a Gene, you could use a Barbara as a healer, whatever you feel like. Um, but the elemental reaction from Vaporize, this is the first time we're going to have a consistent Hydro damage dealer that's going to apply uh, Hydro to pop these Pyro elemental reactions constantly and 
I'm really excited to see his potential damage output in that way. It'll be huge. Uh, again, you don't need to have Bennett. Uh, you can go and use, you know, pretty much anybody to fill this slot if you want to. I'm doing it for the two times pyro and it kind of takes the place of a healer, which would be nice. But if you, you know, want to slot in Amber and just never use her, if you want to just sit your Deluke on the sideline, he's not really a good support in any way, shape or form. But um, that elemental resonance, again, could be immensely helpful. Um, and so, again, we're looking at double pyro, we're looking at double cryo, or we're looking at double water as potential options. Um, they're all really good team compositions. I'm really excited to see what comes next. Also, before I forget, sorry if this is going on a little bit too long, but uh, with child's banner i believe the uh four star fire support character is also coming the girl who plays the guitar she looks like she could apply pyro effects in a very quick way and it appears she does a lot of shielding as well so if you don't have bennett and you are pulling for the child banner it's a high likelihood that you might be able to get her as well and she would probably slot into this team fantastically but we haven't seen a bunch from her yet uh so i just want to leave that open for you guys um I think these are really good team comps. Let me know what you guys think. Let me know if you have any ideas down below of, of different options because uh, I'm all ears. I'm really excited for this. In terms of gearing, we know Child uses a bow. So what should you be looking for in terms of bows? Well, in terms of five stars, Skyward Harp, I'm gonna say is probably his best in class. Um, just, I mean, best, absolute best you could possibly do for child if you manage to have one good for you i think this is going to be his bread and butter if you have a five star weapon uh, increases crit damage by 25 percent hits uh cause an aoe attack that's huge uh, but it also scales off crit rate just like his ascension does so what does that mean it means that he's going to be able to hit like those kind of minimum crit rates that you want before you can start building into the rest of your you know high damaging crit damage type uh builds you kind of want around what 60 70 maybe even 80 percent crit rate he's going to be able to hit those thresholds really really quickly if you have skyward harp plus his uh innate crit scaling from his ascension also if you're running a cryo comp remember that elemental resonance gives you 15 percent crit rate against frozen targets so that even that shrinks that threshold even further as far as four stars are concerned Rust, I think, is going to be a big one on him if you manage to have it. Uh, increased normal attack damage by 80%. Well, this is obviously uh, uh, refined rank, rank 5, but even the 40% at rank 1, that's uh, phenomenal for him. Uh, it doesn't look like you're going to be doing a large amount of aim shotting on him, so you're basically just increasing his normal attack damage by a flat 40% at the absolute worst. Uh, and it scales off of attack percentage, which doesn't make it useless. Uh, Stringless, not a huge fan of having Elemental Mastery as a main stat on a main damage dealer, but he will be dealing a lot of Elemental Reactions and using his Elemental Burst a lot, so it is something to look out for. I would not super highly recommend it, but it is uh, it is there. Um, what else is another one? Favonius Warbow, Energy Recharge, again, not a huge fan of having this on a main carry, and not a huge fan of considering how much you have to invest into these weapons not a huge fan of spending so much on energy recharge uh, but it does have somewhat of a decent synergy with him in terms of the critical hits granting elemental particles so that you can go and uh, regen his skills and swap his skills faster uh, but that we're gonna have to kind of see how his actual um skills end up playing out in the live game but i wouldn't super highly recommend that one as well but it is there as a potential option. As far as three stars, I'm sorry, I'm j I gotta look off to a side screen because I deleted a lot of my three stars just infusing them. But uh, Slingshot, I think would be a, a fairly good three star to use just because of the crit rate scaling um, and the increase in damage in the passive. I think that would potentially be uh, something to look out for. Also in terms of four stars, I think Royal Bow, if you manage to pick that up from the from the cash shop, uh, that could be a potentially big one. Basically, we're looking for crit rate, we're looking for crit damage, and uh, we don't really care about aim damage that much on child. As far as the artifacts are concerned, it's a little bit rough uh, because we don't have a uh, de facto hydro damage set, right? All we have is, you know, to kind of benefit child is things like, uh, where is it? Things like Gladiator's Finale, where, you know, 
you can increase his attack damage percent but then it's like the four piece set is basically useless because he's not using a bow uh other pieces like the berserker set if you're you know if you don't have a lot of crit rate or you don't have a bunch of five stars increases in his crit rate might help you a little bit that never hurts um that's kind of like a more budget option i would say um wanders troop not really a good look uh this i'm trying to think like this might not be that bad depending on how often he can actually proc his elemental burst it seems like it's a fairly low cooldown elemental burst because he's swapping constantly this could potentially be very uh you know a very interesting noblest oblige is what i'm talking about it could be a potentially interesting set to run considering you could potentially go and just have a constant 20 percent attack increase on your entire party and if your elemental burst is an actual significant amount of your damage and it's constantly up uh it, it could really you know it could almost act like a secondary elemental skill for him so noblest oblige just keep an eye out for it um but it's again it's tough because there's nothing that's significantly helping hydro damage dealers uh and so like things like martial artists might be useful just because increase normal attack and charge attack we don't really care about charge attack but normal attack after using elemental skill increases your attack damage by 25 percent that's something else that could potentially be useful because again he's using his elemental skills a lot um, and so those are kind of the ones that i have picked out that i think could be uh, potentially very useful for him but there, there's honestly it's a little bit of a bummer because there's not too much synergy uh in that for him um physical damage not really you not really that useful there's a lot of stuff that is just kind of overkill right because he's already got a lot of crit so um it's tough it's really tough i think brave might be a set that's worth looking at just because uh again you're incre you're just trying to help increase his damage even though you might not get a bunch of benefits as say you know a Diluc or a Klee would get from a crimson witch or a lava walker set you know what i mean um but there is something to be said and i'm thinking about this you could potentially run a lava walker on child just because you're increasing the damage against enemies affected by pyro by 35 percent so if you're say you're running a zhang ling that's constantly applying pyro and you're trying to constantly proc those vaporize procs you could go and increase your damage flat out by 35 percent against those pyro targets now again that requires a little bit of a finesse on your part but it's something to look out for and i think a lot of people have these lava walker sets sitting around i think that it's potentially you know a sleeper op choice to run lava walker on child even though it sounds super counterintuitive um but uh, that's it for me guys that's what i have for you today uh, i hope you're liking these videos please like comment subscribe let me know what you want to see down below i'm going to be doing a lot of destiny coverage because i love destiny and the new expansions coming out soon so uh, let me know what you want to see and uh, that's it for me adam d out